Okay, hello everyone. So my name is Indrzej Bojanowski. I represent a Polish company called Cloudferro, uh, which actually builds the cloud computing infrastructures for EO data. And as you will see in my talk, we, we are now developing two important platforms for, for um, European Commission for European Community in their observation. So I, my presentation is on behalf of the entire consortium, because of course we are not the only one building that. <clears throat> so this consortium, as you can see, is composed for, from, with many leading providers of, of, um, of tools and uh, expertise in this observation. So I think that's also an important aspect in pushing things forward that finally we have all these players in, in one project building that so um, to start with, I mean, the recent ways or still current ways to access official Copernicus data, meaning Sentinel imagery, uh, you, 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 you go for uh, open access hubs. Uh, so for Sentinel 1 and 2, 2 and 3 was this so-called Sci-Hub. Uh, but Sentinel-5, for example, with a different hub, uh, Sentinel-6 distributed at UMETSAT, uh, Sentinel-3 data over oceans also distributed by UMETSAT. Uh, so you had various places to get the data. What is also important, and depending on the product type, there was the rolling archive policy, so that you can access like one year or maximum three years of, of um, fresh data in the immediate access. Uh, so what is important message now is that th this will be the commission. So all these hubs will be closed probably, I guess, in November. I mean, there is a slight delay. So you need to use to the new place. So this new place is called Copernicus Data Space Ecosystem, and it's a long-term project. So my advice is to get used to this platform. Although, of course, there will be other places, commercial ones like Google Earth Engine or Microsoft, where you will get some of the data. But the official official place to get the, the Sentinel data, it's this one. And um, in a nutshell, uh, the, 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 the Copernicus space data ecosystem, the first idea is to get all the data there, but immediately available. Uh, of course, the data is you know, all Copernicus data. It's free and open to everyone. Uh, we started with around 35 petabytes of data, but it should be almost triple in the end of this <clears throat> decade. Uh, and as I said, the project is long term, so you can you can trust that that uh, this will not change uh, earlier than in six to ten years. And what I will show you as well is that it's an open ecosystem. That's why we call it ecosystem, because the third parties <clears throat> and additional services can be part of this, of this ecosystem. In my view, there are few, maybe not revolutionary, but I think important changes in the way how we distribute data, uh, Copernicus data, and how we think people should pro process this data. And so I put these few points um, and try to emphasize these few points. So the first thing is, I would say, a paradigm shift that now we switch from this rolling archive policy and all this Copernicus data, they are in immediate access. So there is no need for ordering. You don't need to wait for anything. Everything is online. So we talk about like this 40 petabytes of data at the moment, as you see, it's it's uh, we have a daily increase of around 20 terabytes of data and i talk only about the copernicus um and this is super important because there are several services like they use the streaming uh, like they they, they, need, they require a data streaming that you cannot you cannot build without this immediate access even if the ordering is super fast so we think it's a it's a big change so saying about saying that all data is in immediate access, I don't go into the details here. You can check on the website, but basically all the Copernicus data is there uh, with the full spatial and temporal coverage. But the raw data level zero of Sentinel one, this is the only data you 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 can access for Europe, the full archive. But for the rest of the world, there is only one year rolling policy. So for the older data, you need to you need to make an order. All the rest is in immediate access 
all the levels. Uh, I don't know. I, I don't want to go into the details, but with Sentinel-2, there are these old baselines, but there is also this new reprocessing data also coming to the ecosystem. I would say basically everything you would expect from from uh, ESA side uh, providing the official uh, official Sentinel imagery. You will have access to Copernicus services, not all of them. This is still under discussion, but at least at the moment is uh, the one concerning land, like the global land service, the land monitoring service, the emergency manage management service, and the marine environment monitoring service. This data is still available also in the ecosystem. You will have access to the contributing missions, this is still, uh, I think, be, be, before end of the year will be everything available. You have also access to Sentinel non-user data, so to engineering data, uh, but this is restricted to, to, I mean, it's not publicly available, so you, depending on the user type. And also you have various complementary data, so I hit put, put the, some of them, like you have da Mary's data, you have SMOS data, you have Landsat for Europe, which is the pro processing of European Space Agency, it's not the USGS. And this is also under discussion if this Landsat data will be available fully in the ecosystem. Um, the second uh, change, big change is that you have multiple access interfaces. So you have, first of all, you have the Copernicus browser. If you are familiar with Sentinel Hub of Synergize, this, they, they provide this, this uh, user interface, graphical user interface. You can, you can search for data. You can do a lot of visualizations. You can download directly. You can, you can build your, your own um, indices. You can build um, uh, various color composites. I mean, there are many, many tools. But you have also for for uh, more operational stuff you have the old data catalog and you have stack and you have the s3 api to access to all the data files uh, you have the apis from sentinel half at open eo i think there will be a lot about this during this workshop so i'm not going to details here you have the jupyter lab where you can do a lot of prototyping with access to all this repository you have also uh, some processors to run on demand and last but not least, if you want to scale up, if you want to be more flexible, you have the infrastructure you can rent next to the to the um, to the data. Uh, yeah, so the, this I already said in the Copernicus browser, you have also uh, options for for doing very quickly like some time lapses. It's just really really in few clicks you can do the time lapse of of cloud free images over a certain area. You can you can plot this on 3D model. I mean, it's really really an amazing tool. I think for for if if you need to do some manual work on on data. And uh, talking about the APIs, uh, so I I think it's it's like also the first place where you have all these various APIs from different distributors. Let's say from different groups developing in one place and compatible uh, with each other. So, um, so apart from discovery and access, you can have also these APIs for processing, uh, like the open EO, for example. Um, when talking about this on-demand processing, so they are official processors of ESA. To, to process the even just the standard products of, of, of Sentinels, but you can also order a different ones, which are like not official ESA process, but very um, common one and 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 and, and uh, used a lot. So you can from the even from the graphical user interface, you can do this order, and depending if you if you pay for it or you don't, if you don't, it's just in this so-called best effort. Um, best effort uh, way we 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 run this we run this processor so you can actually order order various products on level three products uh, on the, on large scales. Um, then if you if you if you need to be more more um, mm, let's say flexible and you want to run your own stuff you can rent infrastructure so you can so you can rent various flavors of virtual machines of different sizes with different um, different processors 
you can you can of course you have the object object storage you have many virtual machines with pre-installed software if you use some like with OSGO Live or or Googies or JS or or even so specific ones like with Sanford Cup, which is the software for for monitoring agriculture purpose of of the paying agency control of farmers declarations. You can build clusters using Kubernetes and everything you can do not only on our cloud but also on the cloud of of uh, of um, telecom um, open telecom cloud, which is the T-Mobile cloud. Uh, another aspect which I think is also super important and when you want to switch between what is in the open public domain and, the, and you need to switch to commercial services, everything now it should be super smooth. That's because in the back end it's basically the same system. It's, so you have the same identity, so you don't need to create the new users. You have 100% synchronized data offer. You have the same APIs. You might have at the commercial services, you might have access to more data, like for example, commercial data, but, but what, it's, what it's available in the, in the data space, it will be available also when you run the commercial part. And this commercial part is actually CreoDias, which you might know. Uh, so it's built on top of the, so it's Creodeas uh, 2.0 now. So exactly, it's a commercial part of the Copernicus space data ecosystem. So if you learn and you develop, and you prototype something on the public service and you need to scale up, there is no need to learn anything. It's like really the same service. You just start paying for bigger infrastructure uh, you, want to, you want to use. So I think it's also it's also a big change that you can you can do that. Um, what is also important that to prevent let's say so-called uh, fake data and some problems in in uh, reproducibility of of the of the processing, there is also a service called traceability. So we have for each product for each single file you can track everything that happened with, with this. So this is about the, all the life cycle from the acquisition and coming into the ground segment and processing to level one, to level two, or even to the, to the final products like land cover or something. Uh, and this you can check also in the website. So you can put the, the name, the file name, and you can, you can learn and read all the history of the file because you have the checksum of each product at each step. So you can be sure that what you are using is exactly, uh, for example, it's an official ISA product and not something else. And also you can use it to track, um, to track uh, if there is no, like was no impact on the data uh, somewhere in the process. And of course, as everything in this ecosystem, you can use the, the website, but you can of course use the traceability API to do it on the in, in the automatic uh, way. And uh, for in the end, I want to have like a small uh, small uh, part not related to the ecosystem, and I try to emphasize it because it's a half official talk about presenting the ecosystem. Uh, and that's because we are as a company, we are also involved in building a different platform is even better say like a different um, thing within the within the um, destination earth program where a completely different idea is behind how you should access the data from various sources which is like uh, through the data federation so as you hear like destination earth is, is this big program of european commission uh, aiming at building the digital replica of of the earth uh, that we can test, for example, uh, like some policies before implementation to see how this, how the, the the whole Earth will react. And of course, you cannot do this modeling without data. So we are placed here in this um, upright corner where w one of the third of the of the whole program is about about data. It's called Data Lake. I think. This front end called core service platform. I think there is a presentation tomorrow about that. But what I'm bringing it here is because <clears throat> here there is 
much more data sets required uh, for this modeling. And this is the Sentinel imagery, so this ecosystem, but there were requirements for Landsat imagery, for Copernicus services, everything, for Eurostat data, for some urban data, for also the data coming as an output of these digital twins. And the idea is that all this data you can pro process at supercomputing systems in Europe, and it's already at Lumi in Finland, in Leonardo, and there is a central site, which is our cloud. And there was a completely different idea how to tackle this problem through the data federation, through this harmonized data access, so that you have one catalog of all this data and you can query them in the, the same syntax from various sources. Um, but of course, this list is not full. So like for heavy users, and I assume there are many heavy users of your data in this workshop, you know, that there are many other data you would like to have in one place or not in one place. And I, I put it to trigger maybe a discussion, you know, because there's there is a lot of data on reanalysis, the big data, geostationary data, MODIS data, climate data store, data sets from UMEDSAT satellite application facilities. And uh, my, my question would be, do you think all this data should be centralized in one repository or we should go towards this data federation? Because as you see in two big projects going on at the moment, completely two different different um, ideas were were taken. So uh, so that's that that's a big question also for me. Um, you know, in which direction we should we should uh, uh, look at. So okay, so going back to the official official. Uh, Paths, uh, just to, to, to sum up the Copernicus data, data space ecosystem, where you have the all immediate data available, which is you know, many, many uh, access uh, interfaces and in processing interfaces there, uh, data authenticity guaranteed by the, the, the traceability service, and, and uh, important aspect that you can switch between the public. Uh, service and commercial services smoothly and with this uh, thank you for your attention. <laughs>